what is up you guys and welcome back to another video so in today's video i just want to talk to you for a few moments a touchy subject that i noticed that a lot of people deal with i know a lot of people raise their children a lot differently in their homes but we're going to talk about how children are supposed to be raised in the biblical home. This is a homemaking channel. I am a Christian homemaker. I am a mother to six and I am a wife. However, I say that to say, everybody have different parenting ways, different ways as to how they parent their children. And that is fine. But I get the question all the time, Brittany, do you believe and should have responsibilities, AKA chores? Okay, my opinion, Yes, I believe that they should have chores uh, slash responsibilities in the home, outside the home, or wherever. Some people may differ and they may say no. I am going to give you my stance, my beliefs, and my perspective on why we, my husband and I, um, as a Christian family, decided we feel like children deserve to have responsibilities and or chores, okay? And I'm going to give you my biblical stance, okay? So in Proverbs 22 and 6, it tells us what? To train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. This passage, this passage, excuse me, is pretty much telling us to train up our children to develop good habits, make appropriate decisions, and to follow God so that they continue to do the will so that they continue can continue to do well into adulthood. So let's take chores for example. You know what I'm saying? How can our children grow up to be the men and women that they are created to be without having any type of guidance or any type of lessons? I'm going to take me and my husband for instance, okay? My children, we have four girls, four girls, not eight. We have four girls and we have two boys. I have six children. I'm going to talk about my my girls, okay? How can my daughters grow up to be the Proverbs 31 or Titus 2 women or whatever type of woman God is calling them to be without me instilling in them what it is that they are supposed to know? Me training them up as a woman is supposed to show them how to be modest when they dress, how to care, how to develop self-care, how to be the godly woman or the virtuous woman that God calls us to be, how to be the keeper of your home, how to, to um, be a good cook, how to handle business, how to do this, how to just do a whole lot of amazing things all in one. How are they going to know how to do that? How are we going to take care of our bodies without writing on them, without um, uh, doing X, Y, and Z? How are we going to take care of our bodies by putting the correct things into our bodies not only that how are we going to grow up uh, get old how are they going to grow up and be able to be these type of women these modest women uh these virtuous women that god has created them to be for their husbands when they get older if they don't know it by watching mom herself right so yes i give my children chores my daughters their chores consist of washing dishes when they get older and they get married how are they going to know how to properly wash wash dishes and to keep their dishes clean if they don't practice what they preach, right? So if I'm telling them that they're supposed to wash dishes, I'm not going to say, okay, your chore is to wash dishes. And then every time they say, well, I don't want to do it, I go in and I take over. No, it's called discipline. They have to know how to do what it is that they need to do so that when they get out of here and they go to do what they're supposed to do, they'll know how to go ahead and do their necessary duties. And not only that, they can instill it into their own children. Same thing with the way we dress. How can I teach my children how to be modest in their appearance if they don't watch mama? We have a lot of bad and negative influences out there. So if we allow our children to get influenced by dressing the wrong way by way of social media or the internet presence or anything like that, and I don't exemplify it here at home, then what am I teaching my child? Am I training them up the way that they're supposed to go? No, I am not. What I am doing is pretty much allowing them to just go and be what the world is creating them to be. And that's not what uh, biblical womanhood and biblical uh, uh, homemaking is supposed to be. That's not what it's supposed to be. My world, the world does not raise my children. I raise my children and I raise them up the way God wants them to be. Same thing with my husband. My husband cannot teach my sons how to be godly men and to be the, the to take care of the outside of the home 
if he does not show them what it means to work, how to put in work, what it means to cut grass, what it means to take out trash, what it means to go out every day and work, what it means to, to, to do a whole bunch of stuff. We cannot teach these duties and these responsibilities to our children if we ourselves do not line up and do what God is telling us to do. So yes, we believe biblically that children are supposed to have responsibilities and chores because if they don't, then they won't be able to exemplify the characteristics that of a godly woman or a godly man the way that they're supposed to be if God, who entrusted me and my husband as their earthly parents, train them up the way that they're supposed, supposed to be. I tell people all the time and I tell my children, I train them up the way God wants me to. Does the Bible say that the kids are supposed to have chores? No, it does not say anywhere that the kids are supposed to have chores. However, the Bible clearly tells us as parents that we need to train our children up in the, uh, uh, ch train our children up in the way that they should go, meaning the way that they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to act, the way they're supposed to be as men and women, so that when they are older, they won't depart from it. They'll have these responsibilities and these um, characteristics instilled in them because of them watching their mother and father that when they get old and they get away from mom and dad, they can say, you know what? I remember mama taught me how to do this, so I need to do this. Or this is what I need to be to be the godly woman. Or this is what I need to be to be the godly man. Daddy taught me this. Mommy taught me that. When they are older and they get away from you, they won't have to depend on you because they know how to do it themselves. We don't want children that are going to be 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all the way up to 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, trying to depend on the parents because they don't know the small basics and the necessities that they need in order to live out their daily life. Us, the same thing. We teach our, we train our children up by way of the word of God. We teach them the word of God. We teach them about God. We teach them and let them know that it's not just mommy and daddy teaching you about Christ that will get you into heaven or that will uh, get you to being able to live a, a successful life, not meaning financial success is more than finances, but if we don't put the word of God in them, how would they be able to know how to even develop a personal relationship with Christ if they know nothing about him? You know what I'm saying? So we can tell them about him, but then you take that information and you apply it to your life and allow God to reveal himself to you. So that way you can then in turn develop a relationship with him so that when he decides to call us home, it's not, well, what did you do? Well, my mama said I did this, or I only know you because of mom. No, no, no. Get to know God for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Get to know God for yourself. So that's what I believe Christian children or just children in general are supposed to have as far as responsibilities. I believe by way of the word of God that Proverbs 22 and 6 tells me as a woman, a virtuous woman, as a mother and as a wife that I need to train my children up in his will so that when they are older, they won't depart from me. So what does that mean? Again, so how can we teach them how to develop healthy habits? We can teach them by five different ways, okay? The first way that we can teach them how to develop good habits and so that they can be able to live a good life and to take whatever it is that we're teaching them into adulthood is by one, talking to them about how much God loves them, okay? One of the greatest blessings of being a Christian parent is the gift of demonstrating God's love for us through our own love for our child. Whenever we hold our child close to us and we speak tender words of comfort and we lay the foundation for them to accept the truth that God knows them and loves them personally, do we demonstrate this principle? But we should frequently talk about how much God loves them uh, with them. When I hug them, I tell them that we love them. When we hug them, we tell them that God knows you and loves you too. In fact, that he knows you and loves you even more than I do. Y'all know my special saying, I love you, but God loves you so much more. Reminding my child that God loves them is just the first step into helping them know that G know Jesus and to understand that that's the most important principle of the gospel. And that's the most important principle of growing up and being the godly woman and man that they are supposed to be. Number two, 
teaching the concept of right and wrong. The second way that we can demonstrate um, being godly parents and training our children up in the admonition of the Lord is by having consequences for bad behavior. Each time we patiently remind our child what they did was wrong and these are the consequences, we're demonstrating that there's a standard that we keep that by which all of our behavior can be judged as right or wrong. The standard of God's word and his character Loving biblical discipline, you know, Bible tells us spirit of raw, spoil the child. You know, we in this home, we practice spanking. It's not a form of abuse. Other people may not, but that's what we do here in a biblical home. Uh, in my biblical home, we do do spanking, um, and we also do redirection and taking things from them and so forth. But biblical discipline, we pave the way for the truth that all have sinned and that the wages of sin is death. While we as true Christian parents patiently encourage the desire for righteousness with our child, without the awareness of personal sin and its consequence, a child will never see the need to depend on Christ. They will never need, uh, uh, they will never see their need for a savior or for why Jesus did what he did for us. Another way, number three, we can train our children up in the admonition of Christ and teaching them how to develop healthy habits is to parent with unconditional love. When we help our child to know Jesus by demonstrating unconditional love, because as we know, God gives us agape love. Um, as a parent, one of the ways we can do that is by asking um, our child after disciplining them, do mommy and dad love you more when you're good or when you're bad? And over time, they will learn to answer, you love me the same, okay? Whether you right or whether you wrong, we love you the same. And our attitude towards our child will con confirm that fact. Not being mean, not being angry, not allowing our anger to develop a form of wrath. It teaches us that we love our children in spite of, and we discipline and we tell our children, we discipline you because we love you. God chastises those he loves. And if we don't do the same that God do to us, how can we demonstrate and train them up the way that they're supposed to be as godly women, godly men, and as godly parents to their children when the time comes? Romans 5 and 8 tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Our parents are striving for that same selfless kind of unconditional love that God had for the Father, that God, that God the Father shows to us the same exact way. However, just as our child is not perfect, so too will you make mistakes as a parent. We make mistakes all the time. And it's important to tell our children that when, not if, you mess up, discipline and anger or are too harsh or not consistent, apologize to your child and tell them that you want them to do better because that's not how God, our father, is with us. When we discipline our children, if you know you're disciplining them out of anger and not out of love, you need to go back and apologize to them. A lot of parents, especially me, I was raised, I'm not, I don't apologize to no child. I said what I said and that was it. That's not how we're supposed to go about our daily life. If we do stuff and we're disciplining our children out of anger and wrath, whereas we're operating out of of love, then we need to go back as parents and apologize to our children and explain to them what is going on. And then in turn, we need to go repent and ask God for forgiveness as well, as well too, okay? But we also need to let them know that we're doing it because we want them to do better and because that's not how God our Father is with us and point out that even though our love for them so much, we will always try to be the best parents that we can be because God is the number one parent to us. Number four, let's talk about how sin affects their relationships. As parents, we can demonstrate how a relationship with God works by talking about sin and how it affects our relationships. Whenever our child disobeys, lies to you, talk about it, talk about how it affects you, talk about how it affects them, open up. We tell our children all the time, I don't care how bad it is, how good it is, talk to us. Don't be afraid to talk to us, whether we get upset or whether we not. Excuse me. Don't be afraid to come and tell mommy about how you feel. We allow our children to express themselves. If there's something that you're concerned about, if there's a certain way that you feel, come and talk to us. Let us know how you feel. And that way, when you open up about how you do that because of the sin, 
Uh, um, sometimes it can make it harder. It, it makes them harder to trust you when you don't. That they are going to do the right thing or to tell the truth the next time. And while God's love is unconditional for us, sin can put a strain on our relationship with him too. So just like sin can put a strain on a relationship with a child and a parent is the same way our sin can put a strain on a relationship with God. And when that trust is broken, it is hard to have a good relationship. So we have to teach our children that when they get older and they become men and women and they develop friendships and relationships with their significant others, with families or whatever, we have to learn how to communicate and be open about the things that we are doing so that we can in turn ask God to forgive us so that we can move forward and we in turn can learn how to forgive others the way God has forgiven us. And coming in at number five is teaching them how to be diligent and teaching them how to be consistent. Letting them know that whatever it is that they do, they do as on to the Lord. Don't do the work because you feel like you had to. Do your work as if you're doing it on to the Lord. Do it with happiness. Do it with joy. Do it with grace. Do it with love. Everything that we do, whether we work in, whether we're doing chores, whether we are cultivating relationships, whether we are doing whatever, everything that we do in life, we need to do it as if we're doing it on to the Lord. Not as if, but do it as on to the Lord verbally and more importantly with demonstration as a parent is the best way to help your child know Jesus at an early age and understand how a relationship with their heavenly father works. When you learn how to raise your children in a godly way and how to demonstrate the gospel as a parent, you're teaching your child how to walk in good relationship with God before they ever leave your home, equipping them in the very best way possible for life ahead. So let's remember Proverbs 22 and 6, train your child up in a way that they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. What they are learned, they are taught. And what they are taught, they then exemplify and put into action. Let your words be words of love, wisdom, and honor. So I pray that this helps you. I pray that this blessed a parent in their household on what they feel like children should have the responsibility um, of doing, being the keeper of the home or just doing things uh, as we call them chores in the homes of themselves. So I pray that this encourages you and this pretty much answers some of you guys' questions that you have for me as to how we raise our children up in our home, the biblical way, and giving you scripture um, behind it. So again, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Brittany. Welcome to Walking Into Her. I hope that you were satisfied and that you enjoyed the things that you have seen. If so, make sure that you tap that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you are reminded every time I post a video. If you are a returning subscriber, hey, butterflies, hey, welcome back. Guys, thank you so much. And until next time, remember that I love you, but God loves you so much more.